interested in hearing more about um, the ignoring piece. How do you just have something happen and look the other way? Awesome. Thank you. So when I first discovered disability, <clears throat> I, um, I just lived together with my first long-term relationship. I was uh, somewhere in the range of 18 years old. And um, we lived together, we had jobs together, we had cats together, we had like sort of traditional thing going on. So I grew sort of attached to that, I was still very much in love with her. And at some point she broke up with me, and I moved back to my parents' place to the other side of the country. From one day to the next, my life was completely different, and I, there was no, there was nothing in my mind that was hopeful. So I was, um, I was in a pretty deep state of... Um, depression and despondency and disempowerment and feeling like a victim and not having any access to anything really. So my human experience was completely engulfed with misery. There was no hope, no glimmer of excitement, no glimmer of connection. There was only disconnect, there was only disempowerment, or at least the illusion of all that. And then I noticed that if I simply looked away, it wasn't there. I could look away from my whole experience. It's like, oh, that's interesting. Oh, here it is again. Complete contrast. 100% misery, 100% nothing there. Now, I was not in a space in that vibrational realm of my persona at that time to investigate what my thinking was because it was too intense, it was too engulfed, it was too, it had built up too much momentum in a negative spiral. So there was too much going on for me to have the capacity to dissect these things patiently and investigate. So now the most liberating thing, the, the recommended thing to do was to create total space away from it for myself. And I could really notice that if I looked to the sky, and by sky I just mean awareness, away from whatever is appearing as an experience, it was simply not there. So I started noticing it and I started getting great sense of enlightenment and empowerment and freedom from that. And then as that became my space, that became my escape, so to speak, I could then later on return to my limiting beliefs because I had taken the edge off, because I had eased my way into vibrational alignment by using what some people would call avoidance. But it was actually the best thing for me at that time because ultimately you can never really bypass anything. This whole thing about spiritual bypassing, you can totally forget about it if you want to because it's impossible. Again, it's a hubris idea that we, as a personal mind, are in control of what will come up for us and what doesn't. But we're not. So you can avoid as long as you want, but it's still showing up, it's still showing up, it's still showing up, unless it's really not relevant for it to show up for you. Now, this is all governed by what you could call your higher mind or your higher consciousness. So it's safe to step away from triggering things, at least every once in a while. It's completely safe to ignore and focus on something that feels much better. Now, it's, there's a difference between true avoidance, which simply means like I'll continue in this direction, but I won't look at what I feel and see. That's not what I did. I was very conscious. But I was so conscious of it that there was no way out. It felt like misery. The only thing I could do is find a perspective that was better feeling. In this case, it was the freedom away from all of it. It's just another perspective of what's possible. You can have the perspective that, oh, it's okay, everything is all right, I'm unaffected by it, or this is meant to be, and I know that this will lead into something better, or I see the abundance in this, I see I need this experience because I'm learning so much from it. But for me, that all wasn't accessible at that moment because it was too heavy, too dense, too clogged up, that my only route out was a more absolute statement, which is, over here there's misery, over there nothing, none of that, just awareness. So that for me allowed my vibration to realign itself to a point where I could then gradually, when it came up for me to naturally do so, investigate these ideas one at a time. Does that make sense? So it was a deliberate conscious movement. It wasn't me just not looking at it or drinking myself to death because I don't want to look at it or whatever. I wasn't avoiding the issues. I was taking control. But I knew that the only way to control this, because there was an, I was a completely different human being in that state, than I'm used to and then I am pleased with. So I consciously chose to deal with it in that way. And that helped because it eased my vibration. And from ease, you have access to higher ways of thinking, higher ways of seeing, than when you're in complete despair. When you're in complete despair, don't try to fix yourself. 
Don't try to solve your problems. It won't work. Maybe every once in a while if you get lucky. But generally speaking, it will only exacerbate the situation by your focus on it. So you need to focus on something that feels lighter, freer, more forgiving of yourself, more loving of yourself, more easeful. Now, it doesn't have to be the most blissful thing because sometimes you don't have the ability to jump to that from rock bottom all the way to like, oh, this is amazing. But you can find a perspective that feels better. You can find a perspective that feels freer. You can find a perspective that feels a little bit more distant from it. And through that ease, through that incremental ease, the ease will find its balance again. And from balance, you can find your way back into bliss or connection or empowerment. And from that space, you're a totally different being. You're literally a different being. And from being a different being, you can now look at the other being's problems that you previously thought was you, but now you realize, oh, there's that being that assumes these things, but it's not me. And then whatever from that is still relevant for you because you have susceptibilities to believing in these things that that being believed in. Now, not all of what belongs to that being is relevant for this being, but there might be certain elements from that past being, that parallel version of you, that are somehow relevant for you, that are somehow preventing you from going even more into your bliss and freedom and empowerment. You might have some of the beliefs that you had there, such as if my partner leave me, for example, in my case, even though I had, I had found ease, there was still some remnants perhaps of, I don't even know if this is true anymore, it's just an example, but there might have been some remnants of, well, okay, this is fine, this situation is perfect, I can see that it's easeful, I can feel connection and freedom from it, but if this happens again, I might feel similar. So even though I'm now free of it and I found ease, there might be certain remnants, but these remnants will show up for you. Those people that are really afraid to spiritually bypass, what they usually do is they perpetuate their focus on their problematic state because they feel they have to deal with everything. When you feel you have to deal with everything, it's another form of arrogance and vanity and taking control of things that are much more organic and fluid and taken care of for you by your higher mind. So you're not dancing in conjunction with yourself. You're not giving yourself forgiveness and freedom and love and ease. You're not allowing the past to be the natural way. It's very unnatural, it's very contrived, it's very yogic, it's very, do this, it's very military. It's not very organic, it's not very loving, it's not very sweet, and it's not very enjoyable, quite frankly. So, follow your resonance, because it's letting you know what is the best way to go about things. Whatever feels the freest, that's the way to go. Don't doubt it just because it moves away from things, or it avoids things. If it avoids things, but it feels great, and you know that your attitude is not avoidance, it's simply finding resonance, then you know that if it does come up in some way that you can deal with from a higher perspective, you will. Because you want to. Because you want your vibration to be in alignment as much as you can. But first you need to find relief. You cannot solve a problem from its own state. You need to find relief. You need to find relief. You need to find relief. Don't seek for the answers. Just seek for the relief. Don't seek for the solutions. Seek for what brings relief. And from relief, you'll find access to greater relief and greater ease. And from ease, you'll find your way back into alignment and balance and joy and bliss. And it goes faster and faster and faster. The slowest process is going from rock bottom to one step above rock bottom to one step above that. But very quickly, the fourth or fifth step will be back in balance. And from balance, it's only one or two steps back into ecstasy. So you will find that it's like, hard and difficult and difficult, but as soon as you get over yourself for a moment, you find some kind of relief, vibrationally speaking, perspective by speaking, and you let that be for a moment, you get over yourself for just a second, <sighs> you're bipolar. <laughs> now, don't identify yourself with the other being by calling yourself bipolar or saying like, hey, wait a second, this can't be, I can't be happy right now. <laughs> okay. Yes, this is true. Okay, now i got to deal with this because some dude once wrote a fucking article 10 years ago about spiritual bypassing. Can we please remove that from the internet? Please? Somebody, <laughs> some hacker out there, you have my permission. Literally thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people misery every day because of that dude with that article. No offense. Spiritual bypassing. Very important. Don't spiritually bypass. Oh. Find ease. Really? Okay. Yeah. Good. So you will find you'll go back into bliss very easily as soon as you take that first step to get over yourself. Does that make sense? 
And then whatever has to show up will show up. What does not show up when you're in true bliss, not in avoidance bliss, not in the fake happy face, but the true connectedness, I can either smile or not smile depending on what feels true, it's just naturally happening. That true connectedness, whatever does not show up in that state does not have to be looked at. So what many people do is if they do find that movement into joy out of their thing, they either make a story out of that whole thing and it becomes too, I don't know what the word is, yay, that, whatever that word is. Or it becomes like, hey, wait a second, this can't be, I can't just be happy right now because this is what I am, I need to be responsible for that. And so they go back into, ooh, because they are identified with their spiritual bypassing principles. Don't allow yourself to be free instantaneously. Allow yourself not to look at anything if you don't want to. You will find that in that alignment, what needs to be seen will naturally show up one breadcrumb at a time so that you have the clarity to deal with it and to stay in your alignment, if not go higher because of those challenges. And when you do it in this way, it's the natural way, it's the balanced way, it's the effortless way, it's the joyful way, it's the Adam and Eve way, it's the stupid way. Because it's blissful, ignorance is bliss. Don't know too much, just find relief. Be simple, like a kid, find relief. Be simple, like a dog, find relief. Move away from painful perspectives, start to experience perspectives that feel like they're connected, aligned, self-realized, self-empowered. Okay? Does that help? Does that clarify 